Good evening. We want to welcome you this, mor this morning. I knew I was going to do that. We want to welcome you this evening to our special Christmas Eve service. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. I want to read the words from um, a Christmas anthem written by Michael W. Smith several years ago. In the space of the beginning was the living word of light. And when this word was clearly spoken, all that came to be was right. All creation had a language, words to say what must be said. All day long the heavens whispered, signing words in scarlet red. Still some failed to understand it. So God spoke his final word. On a silent night in Judah's hills, a baby's cry was heard. Glory sang the angel's chorus. Glory echoed back the night. Love has come to walk among us. Christ the Lord is born this night. All creation sing his praises. Earth and heaven praise his name. All who live come join the chorus. Find the words his love proclaim. Oh, come, let us adore. 
Will you stand with us now as we continue on this?
Christmas name All my days, all my days So let my whole life be A blazing offering A life that shouts and sings The greatness of our King Glory to God Glory to God Glory to God Forever and ever Glory to God Glory to God Glory to God Forever and ever Take my life and let it be All for you and for your glory Take my life Be seated. Am I on now, all right? Good deal. Thank you, sir. Amen. Turn around and Merry Christmas, somebody, just on purpose. Now be obnoxious with it. Just be loud and go, Merry Christmas. There you go. The other day, a lady didn't know what, how to greet me at, at a convenience store, and she said, uh, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, two or three other things. And I said, let's just stop at Merry Christmas. And we Merry Christmas. And she was good with that. So, uh, good. The first witness of the incarnation of Christ, of Christ being inside a woman, this one will blow your mind, all of eternity encapsulized itself microscopically inside the egg of a woman. That's called Christmas. It is amazing. And uh, the first witness of that was uh, his cousin, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist's response to Christ coming to the earth, spirit to spirit, he's still in the womb. He doesn't have the ability to process, but his response was joy. And the Bible says he leaped in the womb for joy. Then when the angels came, we read the passage and spoke to the shepherds. What they said was heaven's joy has now come to the earth. And here's the thing about joy. There's some of us in the room. It will be the first Christmas without people that we love. And uh, that's not going away. We're not going to treat that like it's not real. There, we're going to do family communion, and there are some people that won't be here today. But Christian joy is not circumstantial. It is eternal. And so joy is not absent in the presence of difficulty, it is strength in the middle of difficulty. So some of us today are exuberant. There's a lot of good things going on. Amen. Anybody get any good presents? Okay. Tell the people that gave you the bad presents, give it back to them and say, hook me up some more. Uh, no, you, you're in the midst of very good times and we celebrate those good times. And here's what the encouragement of the Lord on our heart is, is we are not moved by the circumstances to just be swayed by them. We live in the joy of the Lord, which is the strength of the Lord to live in communion with him that brings us joy all the time. And we celebrate that specifically today. Amen. And so turn to somebody and just smile at them. 
There you go. Just smile something. Merry Christmas. Good deal. I know you guys couldn't do it. I knew if I could get you to smile, you'd start laughing. There just was no way you could hold it back, right? So a friend of mine said that 30% 30 of the people in the world are ugly. Look to the right, to the left. If they're pretty good looking, do the math. Jesus died for ugly people, too. It's all right. Okay. Um, the main thing that we do on this night is do communion. We do communion as a family. Uh, it's a church family, but inside the church family are um, natural families. And so we're going to invite you in a little bit to come up with your natural family and take communion together. If uh, you don't have a natural family here, just join any family you want to. It will be an instant adoption. We won't even wait for a judge. Uh, you don't have to do the elongated time and all like that. Just join a family, okay? Uh, because what the Bible says is God sets us in families. And when he's talking about church family, where there is lack in a natural family, the Lord will make it up with people in the kingdom. And so uh, we invite you to just grab a hold of somebody and come on. Unless uh, Downies, don't join the Downies. There's enough of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just, just pick somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, communion is not uh, grape juice in styrofoam, though it tastes like that. Uh, communion is actually an encounter with the Lord. And I'm going to talk about it just for a moment. And then we're going to come for communion. And here's what I'm shooting for. I have something very specifically I'm praying. The Bible talks about this table as being a place in which God encounters us. And my prayer is, may all of us here today literally encounter the joy of the Lord. A portion of that joy is peace. May you come in one way, go out a different way, and may the peace of the Lord stabilize your heart. May his joy release strength to you. May there be celebration of those that are around you. And may there be an encounter with him that is different than before you came. Okay? And so John said this, uh, his cousin, after he grows up a little bit, becomes a preacher, he talks about Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. That was his message. His central message was, Behold the Lamb of God. Subpoint, he takes away the sins of the world. And so tonight we, in the scripture, we behold the Lamb of God prophetically is that Jesus, it was prophesied that, you guys ever heard about those three, three kings of Orient are? Yeah, that's where I get to be stupid one time a year, put a bathrobe on and walk around downtown. And they, they used to be the three kings, the wise men, and now I, I renamed it, we're the wise guys. Uh, but those, those wise men, it was prophesied in their writings uh, 700 years before Christ came that he was going to come. And so if, if God is pre-telling a story, that means that God's in control. And he pre-tells a story that he's going to release and give his joy to humanity. And I love what that scripture says. It says, joy to the world. Goodwill to... Yeah, and I want you to notice it doesn't say goodwill to all good boys. It doesn't say that. Or goodwill to all good girls. Jesus isn't Santa Claus. You be good, he'll show up. Uh, Jesus is going to show up whether you're good or not. Isn't that good news? Good will, that's God's goodness, be to all men through this Christ. And so prophetically, and then we see him incarnationally, he becomes uh, a man that he could live among us. And the scripture says the reason for that was that he could associate with our infirmities, with our hardness, with our bad days. God never had a bad day, ever. And then he became a man and he had bad days because you have bad days. And he lived through bad days as a man to rescue you from your bad days. And that's good news. And so he comes incarnationally. And then in the scripture we see him eternally. 
And uh, we've been studying on Tuesday nights for those that come about there's worship that's been going on forever, will go on forever. And that worship is centered on a throne and there's a lamb that's on the throne. And when John said, behold, the lamb, that lamb is now on a throne. And from that throne, his will is perpetrated throughout the earth. And so in, in his goodness, he came to us that he could take us where he is. We see him eternally in worship. And the scripture says it like this, Revelation 4 and 5, one of my favorite passages. And it says, John says, and they sang a new song, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, on earth, under the earth, all that are in the seas, Heard I saying, glory and honor and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And then Revelation 7 says, every kindred, tribe, nation, and tongue giving glory to the one that sits upon the throne. Isn't it good that we get, I don't have to wait to heaven to get to do that. We get to do that right here tonight and give glory to him. And so we behold the lamb prophetically, then incarnationally, eternally. And now we're going to come to the table you're going to come to is symbolically. The table of the Lord is about the lamb of God, body being broken, blood being shed, that his power and his life could be given to us. John Revelator writes it like this. He says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shined into the darkness. And the darkness had, read the Greek language, a complete inability to control Him. And so his light just broke out everywhere, busting darkness and coming into the places where we needed him, whether that be externally, we're in darkness or internally. And he touches us with his life and with his light. Amen. And so we come to the table that represents that, that we can have encounter with his grace and his goodness. And we like to do that as a family. The first communion was uh, in Egypt, and it was a family gathering together. And so you pick somebody in your family to help serve, and we gather together, and we pray. And as a time, we get to celebrate and pray for our families together. But it's a time that we celebrate that God's light now comes to me personally and to my family and those around us. Amen? So I'm going to ask you to pray with me, and we're just going to invite the presence and power and blessing of the Lord. And then these tables will be open, and uh, one family will come up. When they leave, you just bring your family, and uh, as you are led, as you desire, you come to the table of the Lord. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Lord, there's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a peace that passes understanding. Unto us a child was born. Unto us a son was given. The government was upon his shoulders. Of his kingdom and of his peace, there will be no end. I pray the power of that peace. I pray the dynamic of that joy. I pray the life that has imparted it would be reality to us. I pray as it was with John the Baptist, there would be a spirit-to-spirit -spirit encounter between the very presence of the Lord and our presence, between your spirit and our spirit. Lord, I pray for those in grief that is among us, that there is a loss that's difficult. We pray that you, as the comforter, would make up the difference. Lord, it's fun to see our children and this time of year and this season, the joy that's with them. We want to join them in their joy and others in the excitement and goodness of this time. And we pray that you would elevate it by revealing and releasing your goodness and your joy to us. Father, I pray for families that are gathered here, that will gather around the table, that there would be an interaction with your life into their life. Lord, very specifically, that you would touch families. You're a God of family. First thing you created was family. I pray that you would bless it with your presence, that there would be strengthening and healing and health and life that would come through at this time of communion together. 
May you grace us with your presence. Bless us with your power. Lord, I pray for people that are here that just don't know what to do, that even in this communion, clarity would come to them. People that don't have strength to do, that your strength would invade them. I pray your presence and your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen.